What's up, guys? Welcome to the Coach Fitz Podcast, where we simplify exercise and nutrition so that the average person can look and feel incredible. I'm your host, Brian Fitzsimmons. Let's get it started. All right. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. I got Michelle McCabe, one of the best strength coaches in New Jersey, in with us today, talking about a lot, like talking about um, a bunch of different things as it pertains to training, especially around pregnancy, some stretch, a, pretty much anything you can think of when it comes to staying fit, staying mobile, and feeling amazing. So, here we have Michelle McCabe. Let's tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, hopefully, it's a little easier on the second go around. <laughs> I'll cut it a little shorter. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Michelle, and I worked for a long time with Brian uh, in a gym called Gabriel Fitness. And um, I'm a mom of two. I got my master's in exercise science at Syracuse University. And I've worked in corporate fitness, I've worked in, you know, strength and conditioning. Um, personal training, all the things, training mostly adults. Um, and I do fascial stretch therapy, which is a whole nother piece uh, of what I do. It's it's mobility training, it's assisted stretching. So I have a, my foot in a little bit of everything with the stretching and and strength training, as well as you know weight loss, fat loss, all the things. So I'm really excited to be on the podcast with Brian. And I know a lot of things about momming. So <laughs> here we go. Yeah, because uh, I, I know when I was starting training, when it came to training anybody, I thought everybody was the same. I thought like same rules apply and you train like somebody who's in their 40s and has like two or three kids the exact same way you would train like a teenager. But come to find out that's not exactly the case. So Michelle was a great resource in that regard. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, the stuff we just were talking about before I realized we were not recording um, about training around pregnancy. Because for those of you that don't know, Michelle has two wonderful kids and knows all about how, she, how to stay fit, how to stay strong around pregnancy. Um, so before we were talking about Girls Gone Strong and how they have a program, and I think they have a certification too, and birth fit, how they both are really good resources. So you tell them a little bit about that. And I'm going to include the links in the show notes if anybody wants to look into it a little bit more. Right. So yeah, what we were saying before is, you know, when I first six years ago, my oldest is six years old, Ella, and um, there was not a lot of resource around working out and being pregnant. Um, and in fact, my doctor didn't really have a lot to say about it. He just said, Basically, don't get your, let your heart rate get above 140, and that's about it. Don't lay on your stomach, which is a no-brainer, um, but really had no idea and couldn't tell me or wouldn't tell me. Um, and I love my doctor, but he really didn't, he just didn't say much. So I had to go off on my own and figure it out. Uh, Birth Fit was a really big resource for me. And then now Girls Gone Strong, at this point with Liam, uh, Girls Gone Strong was a better um, resource for me, I believe, because he's four. So they've evolved and now they have a certification around it. And so they, those two are, I think right now the best, um, if anybody wants to go out and look for resources or advice or guidelines around working out around pregnancy. But the basic idea is that, you know, you can continue to do what you were doing pre-pregnancy. Um, uh, of course, you want to be careful of your belly and be careful of lying on your back. Um, but, you know, I was doing squats. I was doing deadlifts. I was doing, you know, incline bench press. I was extra careful just around the belly area, obviously, as I got bigger. And then really watching just mobility. You get more mobile as you get more pregnant. And it's um, your heart rate, you have more blood volume. So your heart rate goes up a lot easier. Um, you feel like just going up the stairs is a common example. You feel out of breath just because you have more blood volume basically. So I was just really mindful. I wore a, a heart rate monitor, but you know, I was lifting before I got pregnant. I was running before I got pregnant. Um, so I think that really helped me. I was doing core training before I got pregnant. So that's my number one advice for everybody who 
um, you know, is planning on getting pregnant is, is, is start working out now. It doesn't have to be CrossFit. It doesn't have to be heavy lifting, but just a well-rounded routine, walking, strength training, that type of thing is really important pre-pregnancy because it helps you throughout. And then once you get later into pregnancy, you know, just moving is a little bit of an issue, but I worked out right all the way up to, you know, two or a week before, uh, the week before I went into labor, I was just trying to walk as much as I could just to kind of get that baby out. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's really individual depending on what you do before you, um, before you get pregnant. But that being said, I've coached a lot of women too that weren't really avid lifters before they got pregnant and they were able to do a basic routine, nothing heavy or nothing crazy, but learn a basic routine while being pregnant. And that's fine too. Just having a coach is a really good idea if you've never lifted during pregnancy, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I can attest to watching Michelle lift while she was pregnant with Liam because that was an, that was an experience again, 20 year old kid. And I'm like, Oh my God, is that safe? <laughs> <laughs> but she showed, I mean, I'm, and the more that I'm learning, like from Michelle, the girls gone strong and everybody is like it, like you said, you, if it's pretty much like, if you can stay fit, that's ideal. You don't want to just like get pregnant and be like, okay, now I'm going to start hardcore. Like right. doesn't go that way. But what would you say for somebody who maybe just found out and they want to like be their healthiest self going into the pregnancy? What would you suggest? I would really say, you know, look through those resources, Girls Gone Strong, Birth Fit, but also if, if you could reach out to a coach like one of us um, and have them either, you know, talk to you about it or give you a program or um, you know, maybe meet up with them and have them walk you through a couple of things. It's really important to have somebody, um, if you've never lifted before, guide you through that and, um, and, and give you some pointers and cue you on movements because everybody's so different. You know, we, I don't, Brian, I know we used to together where we used to work, we used to do an, a full assessment before somebody started working out. Same thing with somebody who's pregnant. That's what I would do, you know, just a quick little assessment to see how you're moving um, so that we can help you further down the road. But hiring a coach is a really good idea if you have never lifted before for anybody, but especially, you know, being pregnant. Yep. And when you were done, when you were postpartum, did you do any physical therapy? Because I know some people recommend like doing pelvic floor physical therapy to like make sure everything is back to somewhat how it was before. I wish I had. Um, I actually did not do that. I think that's becoming a lot more prevalent too, is people finding pelvic floor specialists. Um, I now know two of them and I wish I had been able to go to them. I wish I had known them, bef- you know, immediately postpartum because I think it would have helped me a lot. Even now, um, I think it would help me. Um, and a lot of people need help with their pelvic floor, not just women, you know, yeah. but especially women who are postpartum. Um, I really think, you know, that a lot of times doctors will say, okay, it's eight weeks you're good to go. You can start exercising. You can, it's really individual. Um, you know, some people go through, um, C-sections like I did. I had two C-sections. Some people do, uh, you know, go through labor, natural labor, but everybody could use help with their, their pelvic floor, especially after having a baby. And that is a whole specialty that I think really should we should all get more um, knowledgeable about this. Having a special afterbirth would have really helped me out. The pelvic floor is weak. Most people have a weak pelvic floor. So, and then, and then after pregnancy, whoo, you know, it gets stretched out. There's all kinds of things that happen. So um, I, I think it would have been really helpful for me to have that. I wish I did. Yeah. Yeah. And since we're on the topic of postpartum, like, pelvic floor being a big one. Like I know core training, like a lot of people think, oh, well, it's all like I stretched my belly out. Now I got to tighten back up. I should just start doing crunches and stuff, but that might not be exactly the best thing to do. 
depending on like, like you said, if you had a C-section, like depending on like sometimes depending on the situation, like doctors will not stitch all the way up due to like complications or anything like that. So your abs can be compromised or say everything went well, maybe you could do things others can't. What, is there anything that like you would suggest doing like some base level stuff, uh, like if they haven't gotten the chance to see that specialist yet? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And these are kind of things that I had um, almost wished um, I knew like, you know, seven years ago before I got pregnant with Ella, but um, basic foundational core training, such as like dead bugs, planks, payoff presses, side planks, even just pelvic tilts, you know, getting the awareness around the pelvis and around how to use your pelvic floor. Um, and, and, you know, even like, we used to wrap a belt or wrap a band around somebody's middle and push out on the band, just like that awareness of contracting, relaxing. Um, for me, a big one is being able to relax the diaphragm, relax the pelvic floor. So there's people who need to be able to be able to tighten. There's people that need to be able to relax it. Um, the control, uh, you know, being able to control it and both relax and contract, I think is important, but basic stuff like dead bugs I do now every single day, you know, some version of a dead bug. Um, and, you know, if you don't know what that is, you can go look that up. A dead bug is a really good thing. Bird dog. Oh, th this group is very familiar with dead bugs. Yeah. <laughs> bug away. Dead bug. The crap yourself. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I wish I had known that those are something that I honestly, I do them every single day because it's helped me so much. Yep. Yep. And like you said, even if like, say, if by chance, there are some men that are still listening in. <laughs> um, I mean, it is a amazing exercise, regardless of who you are, what age you are. Like, it's one of those cross body pattern exercises that works a little bit of everything. And it's got a ton of benefits way past like even what we're talking about right now. Right. Yeah. And so that's 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 pelvic floor, right? So <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, everybody. And especially as we age, like, I mean, especially in like the 60, 70 plus range, like it's a big deal and it's a muscle like anything else. It takes a lot of work to keep, to get it to a certain point and maintain it. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, we all yeah. hear it too, like those ladies, um, we women have trouble, like even jumping jacks, right? Yeah. Something as stupid as a jumping jack is hard after having kids. You feel like you're going to run and pee your pants. Yep. Um, well, so that was the, the golden rule. <laughs> something like, you know, dead bugs during pregnancy, you know, po pre-pregnancy, post-pregnancy, like those are the types of things we're talking about so that you don't feel like you're going to pee your pants every time, you know, you do one jumping jack or jump rope, like you should be able to do a jumping jack. Yep. That's yep. For everybody. <laughs> Hey, I mean, jumping is a basic skill. Like you should be able to leave your feet and absorb the impact without a little, uh, for lack of a better term, leakage. <laughs> or sneeze. Like yeah. what happens to me? Let's be honest. Like I feel like sometimes I have to sneeze really hard and I am not going to make it. Like, but that's, that's pelvic floor for you. you know, making your pelvic floor strong will help with that. Yep. Yep. And I remember being on the floor, like some ladies would get embarrassed thinking they were the only ones, like they were like the only ones who had issues with that. And it's like, no, it's a very common thing. Very and, common. and that's why there's like so many specialists coming out now to like help with that. So if there's one in your area, definitely look into it. And you said you knew a couple in New, in New Jersey. Yes, I can forward you. Maybe if you want to put in the notes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'll be in the show notes. If they have a website or something, I'll throw it in. Yeah. I have a couple that I can refer you to, but um, cool. Very important. Very important for sure. Definitely. Definitely. And now past the pregnancy, now the kids are, how, how old are Liam and Ella? Ella's six and Liam six. just turned four. Six and four. All right. So still no rest for mom. <laughs> Babies, but man, it, I thought it would get easier. It's, it's not. It's hard. No. It's hard. So perfect transition. <laughs> because now all the questions are going to be how the heck do you fit everything in like how do you make time for fitness being as busy as you are because I think that's a lot of people's number one issue is just not having time yeah that's everybody's number one issue and then you go and have kids and it is insane and um you know it's so funny because I 
I didn't even realize I put, I made this post today um, on my social media platform, but it's, I was working out early this morning. You know, I get up, I have to force myself to get up early in the morning before everybody else is up. Um, and I've tried it all different types of ways. And it, it literally doesn't work for me unless I get up early in the morning. Um, there's some days where I can fit it in the afternoon, but now with school, it's like, you know, it's just insane. So early in the morning is when I have to get it in. But my biggest advice with that is just trying to be consistent and giving yourself a little bit of grace. Um, finding that time that works for you. And if it's 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes, you know, it's a, it's juggling, not balancing. So, um, you know, finding that time in your calendar, writing it down and trying to be consistent with it. Um, just so happens that early in the morning, that's when it works for me. I have to force myself every time. It's not yep. easy. It's still not easy for me, but I have to force myself to get up. And once I have that first cup of coffee, I'm good to go, but I got to get water, coffee out to the garage. Um, and once I'm there, I'm good. But that's another two things is, you know, um, having a place to work out, having a dedicated place, whether that's, you know, in your home or at a gym or outside of your house, and then having um, a plan has made it so much easier. So during COVID, what I did was converted, we converted our garage, not really converted, but we made a little space in there for a gym. Um, and then I had a place outside of the house, it's still at the house, but outside of the house for, for me to go work out so I could get away from the dishes and the laundry and the kids and everything. And then, and then having a plan. So I, a lot of times write myself a plan, but usually it's better if I have somebody else write me a workout plan or, you know, I sign up for a challenge, somebody else's challenge or do somebody else's workout plan. Um, but having it like ready to go so I can just get it done is key for me. Um, now when it comes to, oh, sorry to cut you off. Oh, go ahead, I, go ahead. When it comes to having a place to work out, I know a lot of people have trouble, especially like when COVID hit, like the keeping the workout equipment really close to the bedroom or something. Do you have any tips as far as like, cause I know creating your own space is a big, big thing that helps. What are like, what would you suggest if like for the average person where they should set up their equipment and like any tips that helped you? Yeah, I think it's actually huge for parents to be able to just work out wherever you are. I know it's hard because you want to kind of step away from the environment to get your mental space, but it is super convenient. You know, if you have little babies and you need to jump into a workout, like when they're napping for, you know, 30 minutes or whatever it may be, it is important to have some place in your home to be able to jump in there, do it, and then get out. Um, for for like a home gym situation, like you really don't need a lot. Over COVID, I only had, I mean, besides I do have a barbell in my garage, but a rack, eventually I got a rack. But I started out with one pair of 30 pound dumbbells, um, a little package of bands. So I had like three different size bands. Um, and I think that was it, maybe a 10 pound pair of dumbbells. So two pair of dumbbells, small, large, and some bands. That's really all I was working with in the beginning. And it works. Like you really don't need much. Um, and then I was using like washcloths on the floor as sliders. I still do that to this day. You don't need special slider equipment for that, but yeah, a pair of dumbbells, a band and some washcloths. Like that's really all you need. All you um, need. <laughs> we got really creative over COVID, but, um, you don't need much body weight, even if you're just starting out. Yep. Yep. That, I mean, I pretty much started the same way. Like when we closed up, like when the, when the gym started renting out equipment, I'm like, Oh crap, what can I grab? <laughs> and, and it, you end up using like the same three things. Like you never end up using as much equipment as you think you do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and while we're talking about the weights, cause I know I harp a lot on constant variations of progressions, like trying to go up in weight. Like, do you think that there's like, uh, 
a limit to how heavy you should go before you get bulky or anything like that? For like for women, women, men, anybody like say they're not trying to get bulky. Should they still lift heavy? Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, All right, that was, that was a toss up. <laughs> Honestly, like, you know, we all heard, we, we all hear it every single day, you know, especially from women, um, women are afraid to get bulky or big or, but yeah, no, I, I think getting strong is way more important than worrying about getting, getting big. And, and we all have dispelled the myth, you know, that lifting, lifting heavy is going to make you bigger. Um, we all know you have to like eat a shit ton of food and, work out a shit ton and, and lift heavy weights, but like in, if, in order to get really, really big, but that, I mean, that's really hard, especially for women to do that. I think lifting heavy is, is important, uh, for women, especially as we're aging, um, you know, in, in moderation, because you want to be safe and you want to be doing things right. Um, but it is, it is important to lift heavy and, and, and challenge yourself. Um, at home, if I needed to add weight or resistance to something, you know, I would, sh I would add a band to my den uh, dumbbells, you know, I would hook up a band to my dumbbells and try and make it harder, or I would slow the exercise down, make it eccentric, make it, you know, ISO holds, anything to make it feel um, and seem heavier. Um, you know, it is harder if you don't have a gym and you can't increase the weight like that. But yeah, I, th I think, I think it's important to still be able to lift heavy if you can. Yeah. Is that the right answer to your question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I knew which way you're going to go with it. I just wanted to toss it up for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knocked yeah. it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, lift, lift heavy if you can. And, you know, I think cardio is important too. So go for walks. Yep. Um, I don't think you should run for miles. Definitely not. Um, but I thought you were a runner at one point. I like you? to run. I'm still a runner, but you know what I do now? Because I'm a mom and I have to get it done fast and I do sprints. So it's better than running eight miles like I used to do. I used to feel like crap when I did that. Yep. Um, so I still do cardio. I do, you know, sprint, sprint work. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was just listening to somebody else's podcast and they talked about the knees over toes guy. I think his name's Dan Patrick or something. And he said one of the most basic things that you should be able to do is from a cold start, be able to sprint without getting hurt. But how many people do we know that can actually do that? Very few. At, at 25 years old, I pulled a hamstring doing that in softball. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking now, can I start from a cold start? <laughs> I don't know if I could, but honestly, like, you know, I, I still play soccer. So that's why I go out and sprint. I like to run. It's better for my, it's good for my head than, you know, better than anything else. But I, I do sprint work because I want to be better for soccer. Uh, I want to get it done faster. I want to do more work in a little, little amount of time. Um, and I feel better doing it. So. Yep. Yeah. So if, if there's anybody listening right now that like does like the, the recreational sports, like they still have time to do that. What, what would you say, like, are some big things that have kept you? Cause I don't remember you missing any work and you've been playing soccer for a while now. Like, what are some keys to you not getting hurt, like in the game or in training or anything like that and stuff that's worked for you over the years? Definitely. Yeah. And I've been off and on with soccer over the years. I've tried to play as much as I can, but like with being pregnant, I had to stop for a little while playing soccer because it's kind of dangerous, but, um, <laughs> but that's not recommended during pregnancy <laughs> contact sports. Damn. I wish I was, tr I tried, but they would told me, told me no. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's really been, I think, um, Staying consistent with my strength training has helped me. Staying consistent with mobility work. So, um, you know, I try my best. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but I try my best to either do at least one day of like a yoga um, or one day of just a mobility routine that I write up for myself. Um, so I try to do that. And then really good warm ups. Like, you know, my warm ups, Brian. Like, I spend. Mm -hmm. 
15, 20 minutes at least on my warm ups because I feel that I, I move much, much better um, doing that, that way. And I think that's just because I'm getting older and I need yep. that. I, I mean, <laughs> as we get older, warm ups are important. And anybody who's listening now that is a Coach Fits online client knows that there is a 10 minute, at least 10 minutes warm up every single time because it improves mo. It improves movement quality, keeps you healthy, and it just there's nothing bad about doing a, a warm up, and you're always happy once you've done it. Yeah, and I really do think that's what's kept me healthy for playing soccer all these years. Um, yep, you feel it. You feel it when you get older and you try to play a sport. Like it's not like when you were 25 and you just jump in there, play, and go home. Like it's if you do that, you really feel it. So. Yep. And even at 25, you could pull a hammy. (laughs) That was, that was during the powerlifting days. So, I mean, what people don't realize a lot of the times is when you do styles of training that do not really emphasize many different like planes of motion and everything, you do the same thing over and over again, like powerlifting, you kind of become like a meathead robot. (laughs) You can't really move out of that sagittal plane. So so for your warm up, would you say incorporate some rotation, maybe some side to side stuff? Yeah, I, I like to incorporate a little bit of everything, um, especially if I know I'm going to be moving, like you know, for for a game, for a sport. Um, but yeah, all different planes of motion, side to side, up down, all around. Um, I you know I think of it as body parts and joints, joint by joint. I try to go with, but. Um, I'll have to link that one too. You're just full full of the links today. The joint by joint approach, which is a Gray Cook and Mike Boyle like brainchild thing. It it's one of the best things to um to look at as far as like joint mobility and stability. So if anybody wants to look into that, I'm definitely putting that in the show notes. Absolutely. So yeah, and you know, definitely ranges of motion, but also um, you know, stability in my warmups as well is, is important. Yep. Yep. Uh, And when we were like, I know when Justin uh, Rabinowitz strived to move, like when I would pick his brain, it was always more stability work than mobility, because if you can't own that range of motion, what, like it usually doesn't lead to good things. Correct. Absolutely. So in order to be mobile, you need to be stable and vice versa, you know, important to be mobile and get stable. So owning the positions is important. And that's why I spend a whole day on either yoga or a whole workout session on yoga or mobility, because if you're not working on it. You can't get better at it. So yep. I really do try to include that in my weekly like routine. Yep. But kind of like what we were saying, it's, it's variety. You can't just do powerlifting every day, all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and expect not to get hurt. I really believe that you do have to have a variety um, in there. So I like to play sports. I like to sprint. I like to lift weights. And then I definitely like to do mobility yoga. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you need to mix it up plain and yeah, simple. Yeah. yeah. And I recommend that for my clients as well, you know? Yep, definitely. Mm-hmm. But now, since we brought up the topic of mobility, let's talk a little bit about FST. So for the, for anybody that's hearing FST right now, and they're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> but they're interested. What would you, in like, how would you package it if somebody were to ask you, what the hell is FST? Ah, wow, that's the famous question. <laughs> well, I always say that it's really to experience and understand what it is, you have to do it with me. So... Um, Can attest to that. <laughs> It's really, um, it's assisted stretching and um, it's a modality that I do on a massage table. So I have my, my client lay down on a massage table and I take them through all different dynamic assisted stretches, but it's really more than just stretching a muscle. It's, um, it's opening joints and connective tissue in order to get better range of motion. Um, so it's training joints, really. Um, it's it's opening joints. It's a lot of traction. Um, if you if you've ever tried to do yoga or stretching on your own, it's hard because you're trying to force yourself into certain positions, and a lot of times the joints get jammed. Um, 
And even in traditional assisted stretching, like think of somebody pull, you know, pushing somebody's foot up to do a hamstring stretch, you know, and holding it up there, what you're doing is jamming, jamming the joints. And it really does feel uncomfortable a lot of times. But with FST, fascial stretch therapy, we're doing a lot of traction and lifting and creating space and using angles, we're opening the joints and lifting so that you're not jamming the joints, you're opening them and then stretching the tissue. So it's just a really unique, pain-free way to gain better ranges of motion, body awareness, flexibility, um, and also breathing. So um, it's not just typical stretching, it's training all of those things along with the breath. So it's really cool. I recommend everybody go check it out. If you're like, what the hell still? You're probably still not understanding. It's hard to explain in words. So you can just, you can go look it up. Um, you could look at my page on Instagram. I posted um, some videos there. Um, Stretch to Win is my certifying organization. They are like the gold standard in stretching, um, fascial stretch therapy. And they're awesome. So I would, I would look it all up if you're at all interested you can check it out there. Yeah. And just from like note from uh, noticing on my end, it seemed like the clients that really, really benefited like tremendously, like night and day seemed to be those type of people that really struggle to relax. Like it seemed like the people that were the stress balls <laughs> and it just, I don't know what, I think it's because like with FST, like when Michelle does it, she sets the mood. Like it's like the lights go down, like the smooth music comes on and it allows you to relax because when you do like traditional stretching, like it could be the, like in a loud gym and you're just not in the right zone to do it. And it's almost like this hardcore stretching where it's like, like reaching and like struggling. And when you're in that sympathetic tone, like your body doesn't open up when you're in that parasympathetic, like the rest digest really relaxed, that's when the stretching has its best effect it, it, by just getting you into that zone where you're allowing that motion to happen, that stretch to sink in. Like when you have Michelle, like, gent like I know when I would like get it done on my hip or whatever, you do like those circles and like, it would almost like warm you up to the idea of like, this is happening. <laughs> and then without even realizing it, you go a little further, a little further, a little further. And it just seems like for anybody that really struggles with dialing it down and is just like tense as anything, like they could really benefit from FST. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it's all about, right? Uh, stretching is really about your nervous system. It's really not about your muscles being tight. It's about training your nervous system. So what can you do to help control your nervous system? It's really hard if, to think about, all right, I'm just going to touch my toes, right? But if you breathe, and breathing is key to help control the nervous, nervous system, um, you can access that parasympathetic system when you're breathing, you're deep breathing. So when I'm stretching people, I'm coaching them breathing as well. I'm cueing them breathing. Um, and how often do we ever concentrate on breathing in everyday life? Like we don't. So that's a really important key and part of how we get better ranges of motion is tapping into that parasympathetic and breathing. So yeah, that's a huge part of it. Huge part of it. And it's super relaxing. But <laughs> that being said too, like I stretch people on the, on the sidelines of a soccer game, football game. So you can do it in a non-relaxing atmosphere, but just having somebody else do it for you automatically yep. puts you not on the defense. It puts you in a relaxed state. So just definitely yep. try it. I recommend. Yeah. It just allows you to like, just like give the steering wheel to somebody else. You Absolutely. can just be in your own zone and just forget about everything for like, what, what is it normally like 30, 60 minutes, 30 to 60. Yeah. Most people do 60, but 30 is perfectly fine too. Like some of the athletes that I do, like, you know, 30 minutes on the table. Perfect. Um, and they do train us, you know, stretch to win trains us to stretch people before a game and get you ready for that sympathetic state too. So there's benefits to it that way as well. Like some people like to do it at night before they go to bed to relax. And then I've also had people 
stretch people like let's get you ready for the game let's get you all mobile and then we kind of psych you up we get your body psyched up and ready for the sympathetic state that makes sense yeah yep. yep and just in case anybody's hearing sympathetic parasympathetic and they're like what <laughs> like sympathetic is like the like go, like the flight or fight or flight like the zone you're in like if you were getting chased by like a cheetah that's kind of ha- like that feeling or if you're constantly stressed that's kind of the state your body's in and the parasympathetic is like next to sleeping <laughs> like when you're just relaxed and chill as a like cool as a cucumber <laughs> and most of us are in that sympathetic fight or flight all day long so we need help to get to that parasympathetic and that's why fst is so beautiful because we help you do that and then we help you get mobile too Yep. Yep. And when it comes to breath work, or, or, like, is there something, if somebody's listening in the car right now, is there like a drill or something that they could do like right now and reap the benefits of being able to relax for like five seconds out of the day? Oh, I'm so glad you, I just texted <laughs> somebody last night. I texted this too. Um, yeah, I highly recommend, and this does take a little bit of practice, but so you may want to start out not in the car, but uh, while you're driving, uh, you might want to try just laying in bed tonight, but it's the four, seven, eight breath. Um, Dr. Weil, um, is a guy who I learned it from. You can look it up on YouTube. He has a video. There's a link to it, um, which will be in the show notes. (laughs) And Um, And how do you pronounce that? Or how do you spell that? While, while I believe it's W E I L. Or maybe right. the opposite, I L E O. I'll Andrew. find it. Yeah, he's yeah. like a holistic guy, holistic doc. Um, but he, um, I don't know if he came up with this method, but he introduced it to me. It's basically you breathe in for four seconds, you hold your breath for seven seconds, and then you exhale for eight seconds. And you do that only to a count or a four cycle. Um, four times. So it's one of those things that it helps with anxiety, helps you get into the parasympathetic state. I started doing it to help me fall asleep at night. Um, you know, when the wheels start turning at night and you can't fall asleep or you can't get to sleep, it helped me uh, with that, sleeping better. Um, and I think he recommends, you know, you have to do it over a certain amount of time for it to really, really benefit, like, you know, help with anxiety and help with the bigger things. But for me, it helped like right away. It helped me fall asleep, like right away for four, seven, eight breath. Really yeah. good. It sounds like it gets into that, like uh, routine setting almost like when your body, like I know when we had clients, like we would always tell them like to set a sleep routine. Like, so it almost is like, it knows the relaxation is coming once you get into that, that rhythm. So it could, I think there's a lot to be said for like consistent conscious effort towards whatever you're doing. Cause then your body's going to be like, okay, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend it too, because I think, you know, the science behind it really is like kind of what we were talking before. It affects the nervous system. Right. So, and a lot of us don't have a ton of time to spend meditating or which I highly recommend by the way, but you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes of meditating, that's, that's hard to do when you're, especially when you're a parent, right. Or you're, you work a lot. Um, but something as simple as four cycles of four, seven, eight, it's not intimidating. You can do it really quickly and it's helpful. So if you can try that out consistently, like right before you go to bed, let's just say, or maybe you're sitting at a traffic light or, you know, I don't know if I recommend it while you're driving, but (laughs) You could try it. Just don't get an accident. <laughs> Maybe when you're sitting in line to pick the kids up. <laughs> oh, no. some, you know, at some point in time when you're standing still or, or sitting, um, if you're stressed out, it'll help. I, I really do think. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to pick your brain on that. Cause I just started getting into the idea of meditating, just the conscious breath work. Like I remember you like telling, telling us all about it. And just breathing and being conscious of what you're doing, like focusing on inhaling, focusing on holding it for a second and focusing on breathing out, like it works wonders. I just like, it really brings you down and like allows you to get out of that box of like whatever's going on throughout the day. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think starting with something that's not super intimidating, like, like what I just said for yep. cycle or five minutes, I think is really helpful for a lot of people because thinking about breathing is kind of, it's like, sounds boring. <laughs> it's also like, oh my God, another thing I have to add to my routine. But if you just do it for four cycles, like that's easy to do or five minutes, that's easy to do. Um, and you start there. So. Yeah. And for anybody saying like, I know how to breathe. How many people have we worked with that when they're working out, they have no idea how to breathe? Yeah. yeah. And it's not their fault though. No, we no. We all get out of sync because we stress breathe. So um, we think we're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, even I, like I find myself usually I'm like driving or going to get the kids or something where I'm stressed out and I don't realize that I'm holding my breath and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm holding my breath. But, um, you know, so we all get out of that, that pattern of breathing correctly. So just bringing yourself back to that like primal pattern of like allowing yourself to breathe the right way, concentrating on it. It's just like training. You got to practice to be able yep. to do it. Yep. You know? So I, I know stress definitely plays a big role, but I know for like myself, when I'm, when I'm a couple pounds overweight and I'm trying to suck it in at all times, like that's when the breathing kind of goes out the window. Cause I'm like trying not to look like a fat slob, but I'm like really breathing, like, like up in the chest and it's like, it's dumb, but it happens. Cause like, when you look at like babies, they're just belly out, like what's going on. <laughs> It's so interesting that you bring that up, Ryan, because like I kind of alluded to before when we were talking about the pelvic floor, like I've had so much trouble relaxing my diaphragm, relaxing the pelvic floor because I've been trained and I know a lot of women are like this. We've are we going to the Fonda? <laughs> what? <laughs> are we going into the Fonda? I don't know. The sucking it in? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, we constantly suck in and we don't even realize we're doing it because society tells us we have to be smaller and skinnier and have abs. Well, guess what? I've spent like, you know, a lifetime keeping my abs tight and sucking it in because that's what we're told we have to do to look good. And now the pelvic floor is effed up and I don't breathe right. So that's a really important point is that who cares if our belly's sticking out? We need to be able to breathe correctly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and even if it's in the car alone, like let yourself like hang out, be free let for a sec. <laughs> let it out. And yoga pants are terrible because they come right up. I know we all love them and I love them too. Like we pull those high-waisted yoga pants up because it helps us feel nice and tight, <laughs> but you can't breathe in them either. Like if they're too tight and you have them all the way up like here, you know, you can't... It, it's terrible. Like we've really created bad breathing patterns. Yeah. And it, it seems like the idea of the corset refuses to die. <laughs> they find a way to put it in everything. That is exactly what yoga pants do. <laughs> I love yoga pants and I am, a, I love them, but oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yep. Let that belly out. Let yourself. <laughs> All right. Those are some incredible tips. This, this has to be like the most information packed episode I've done yet. And I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think so. All right. Let's see. Do we have any questions? Whoop. All right. Doesn't look like anybody left any, but that's okay. Maybe next time I just started doing this on Facebook. So everybody's, uh, and it's four o'clock. So my people and, might be busy. <laughs> yeah, people are busy making dinner and whatnot. I, I get it. Yep. Yep. But they'll be able to catch this on the podcast. It'll be on Apple, Spotify, all the good stuff. So um, yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Do you have anything to leave everybody with? Like you want to tell them what you're doing right now? Anything like your services that you offer? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm, I'm just kind of in the building process. Um, literally just got started on my own. So you could check me out on Instagram. Uh, I'm working on TikTok, so you can't check me out there yet, but I'm. Oh, please do. <laughs> they, they pump, they pump up the new accounts. Just go I for it. Try it. I, try it. <laughs> I gotta get into it. Finding the time, Brian, finding the time. <laughs> so my Instagram yep. is, is, is 
underscore Michelle McCabe underscore. And then you can find me on Facebook too. Um, and then right now I'm right now I'm just doing home visits for FST for stretch therapy. And we're going to be launching some online stuff soon. So I'll keep everybody in the loop on that, but yeah, just, just building, just building. Awesome. We'll, launch, we'll launch soon. Awesome. And the FST, is that like strictly North Jersey where, where if just in yeah. case anybody's listening in around the area? Yeah. North Jersey, holler at me. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you know, Morris County is, I, I'm in Persephone, so Morris County, around Morris County, Union, Essex, that area is is where I travel. All right. And for anybody wondering, wait a second, Persephone, that sounds familiar. We're basically neighbors. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Maybe do this in the same room. That would be fun. Yeah. Next time. Because I, I would love to have you back on because this is, like I said, one of the best podcasts we've done yet. So. Thank you um, so much. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm happy to be on. It's, it was fun. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you again for coming on. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll end it here and I'll see you guys all next week. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a five-star review. If you know somebody that can benefit from this information, be sure to share it with them. And if you want to catch all the upcoming episodes, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.